Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pup wheat and Quaker Pup rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast I really go for. He's enjoying his Quaker puffed wheat. Looks good, too. It is good. I'll say it is. And so is Quaker puffed rice. These giants ready to serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you, too. Makes a thrifty deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. Tomorrow, sure, try this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Ma Gratland had run the trading post at Barton Pass ever since her husband's death. And every trapper in the district respected her courage and honesty. She had one son, Clem, who was 19 when the big strike on the Bonanza was made. And the stories that drifted down from the Klondike made him eager to try his luck at prospecting. Ma tried to discourage him. Son, there's something about prospecting that's like gambling or drink. Once it gets into your blood, you can't get it out. You're no good for anything else. You always figure that next day or maybe the day after you'll be lucky. Well, it's possible. Gold is where you find it. It'd be the unluckiest day of your life if you ever did find it, Clem. Well, you wouldn't be satisfied. You'd want more and more, and you'd end up by not having any. Clem, this post will be yours after I'm gone, and and you can make good money here, enough for anybody. Oh, Ma, wouldn't you like to live in a big house in San Francisco and have servants to wait on you and wear silks and satins? <laughs> now, wouldn't that be a sight to make you bust out laughing? Ma Grantland wearing silks and satins. I'm a sourdough son, and I'm proud of it. I love this country. Even when it's 40 below? Why, what's a little cold? Cold can't hurt you. Well, maybe you like it, but I don't. Never thought a son of mine would go soft. Oh, now, you know better than that. Well, gosh, Ma, you and me and Frank and his wife and the Indians, we don't see anybody for weeks at a time. I'm young. I want some excitement. Oh, so that's it. You just want to go to Dawson and have a good time. No. I don't see why you won't give me a chance, Ma. You don't really need me here. Frank can handle all the heavy work. Now, I gave you my answer once, and nothing you say can change it. You couldn't stop me very well if I made up my mind. No, maybe not. You're only 19, but you're bigger than most men. I guess you got a right to decide things for yourself. The only thing is, son, It'd be sort of foolish to start out for Dawson without a grub stake. And you won't get a cent from me. So don't bother me anymore with your pesky talk. Hey, listen. Dogs. Yes. Wonder who it can be. I'll take a look. Who is it, Clem? A couple of travelers. I never saw them before. Hiya! Ho! Ho! Oh, there, youngster. I got some furs to sell. Well, bring them in. Hey, Frank. Here? Unharness this team. Feed the dogs. Okay. Trappers, huh? Can't be from around here. Howdy, ma'am. You Mark Hamlin? Yep, that's me. My name's Smith, and this is my partner, Lefty. Uh, that is Ben Jones. We got some nice pelts for you. Just put them on the counter there. I'll look them over and pay you what they're worth. Nobody ever gets cheated at Barton Pass. Well, that's what we heard, ma'am. Where are you from? Down south. Lake Kusaya. Come a long ways to sell your furs. We're heading for the Klondike. Honest? Oh, you Mrs. Grantland's son? Uh, yeah, my name's Clem. 
sure wish I could go up there and take a turn at prospecting. What's stopping you? Ma is. These look like Moose River foxes to me. Anna, we trapped them down south. They come from Lake Kusaya, ma'am. Well, I'll give you six dollars apiece for the blacks and four for the silvers. Only four? Sure, they have to dye them before they can be used. Okay. What's it come to? Mm, I'll figure it. Bring me the cash box, well, Clem. You just tell me how much you want, and I'll bring you the money. Land sakes, can't you do anything but argue today? Bring me the box. But, Ma... I... What's the matter, Clem? Don't you trust us? Sure he does. Why shouldn't Hurry he? up, Clem. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's a funny kid you got there, ma'am. There's nothing wrong with Clem, except that he's got his head full of ideas about finding gold. Ah, thank you, man, if you don't talk about the Klondike to him. Let's see now. 144 and 24. That's $168 altogether. Well, I suppose you'll want to put up here for the night. Oh, no, ma'am. we got to keep moving. There's no special reason why we should, Ben. Oh, I didn't say there was. Well, you've been driving your dogs pretty hard. They look to me like they need a rest. You're right, ma'am. There's an empty cabin on the other side of the clearing. I'll have Clem light the stove, and you can bunk there for the night. There you are, Ma. Oh, thank you, Clem. Now look, Lefty, Clem's got a gun. Any objections? You better put it away, Sonny. Ha, oh, oh, ha, take it easy. He don't mean nothing. <laughs> Here's your money. Count it to make sure it's all there. Yeah. Thanks. Give me the box, Ma. Don't rush me. I have to close it first, don't I? Now you put it right back in the cupboard where you got it. Ma. What's the matter with you, anyway? Your son seems to think we're suspicious characters, Mrs. Grantlin. Stop the nonsense, Clem. These men aren't prospectors yet. Now, don't start that again. Don't you? Here, take the box. After you put it back, you better get over to the traveler's cabin and light the stove. Smith and Jones are going to spend the night with us. Ma, maybe that isn't such a good idea. <laughs> Why ever not? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I don't like to be talked to like a kid, Ma. Too bad about what you like. Will you move when I ask you to? Sure. Someday I'll move a long way. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Well, it may be sooner than you think. Smith and Jones had supper with Ma and her son that evening, and the boy continued to carry a gun and watch them every minute. But the evening passed quietly enough, and the men retired to their own cabin about ten o'clock. At midnight, they were still awake. The man who called himself Smith was lying on one of the bunks. His partner was nervously pacing the floor. Hey, listen. Listen to what? I thought I heard somebody outside. You're crazy. Scar, we can't stay here all night. I never said we would. Look, maybe they found Joe already. Maybe there's somebody on our trail right now. I don't think so. It could be. That redcoat Preston was somewhere around Moose River. Suppose he just dropped in on Joe. Anything in Joe's cabin to prove that we done it? We left a trail, didn't we? Not much of one. From what I hear about Preston, it wouldn't have to be much of one. Forget it. Why can't we get started now? The dog's arrested. I'm waiting till everybody's asleep. What for? What difference does that make? Look, did you get a look at that cash box of the old ladies? Sure. Sure, I saw it. Did you see how much was in it? Plenty. Over 2,000 bucks. All we got's 168. Well? Well? You think we can get into the store without waking everybody up? Sure. But the old lady and Clem live in the back of it. They do wake up. They'll wish they hadn't. I know more of that stuff. <laughs> Leave it to me, Lefty. Kid's probably standing guard. That gun, the way he kept watching us, he's onto a scar. You know why he got suspicious? Why? Those notches on your gun. Ah. Don't pay to brag. Now, just take it easy. All the lights are out over there. You give them a little more time. Hey. Now what? There's somebody coming out of the store. Let's see. It's a kid. What's that he's got under his arm? Looks like his ma's cash box. Yeah. Yeah, it does. He's coming this way. What do you suppose? No, he isn't. He's cutting around the back of the storehouse. That's where the dog run is. That's right. Come on. We'll see what he's up to. By the time the two men reached the back of the storehouse, Clem had his team harnessed. Where's he going? Heard what he told his ma. He's heading for the Klondike. That's the old lady's cash box, all right. He's putting it on the sled. Good. What's good about it? Mush! Mush! There he goes. What's so good about it is getting away with the cash. He stole it. He'll get blamed for it. But he won't keep it for long. Come on, we'll harness the team. We're going after him. Five minutes later, the two men had their supplies loaded and started out after Clem. Mush! Mush, you! 
And from the doorway of his cabin beyond the storehouse, Frank Whitaker watched them. He was struggling into his parka, and he ran across the clearing to the store. Ma! Ma, wake up! The door at the rear of the store opened, and Ma appeared, a blanket wrapped around her shoulders. Land sakes, Frank, what's the matter with you? Don't you know? Clem's gone. Nonsense. It's true. I saw him leave myself. I was just getting into my clothes to come and tell you, when I saw the other two start out. They took the same direction, north. I guess Clem's going to Klondike with him. I don't believe it. He wouldn't go without saying goodbye. He has, I tell you. He couldn't. Well, why not? Without supplies? There's plenty of supplies right here. Well, there's none missing. Well, there's plenty more in the storehouse. It was there I saw him out in the back. I won't believe it. I just won't. And he certainly wouldn't travel with those two men. Why, well, you talk as if there was some understanding between them. Why, Clem hardly spoke to him. He glared at him all through supper. He acted as if they were after my cash. Well, I... I don't like to say this, but... You don't like to say what? Have you looked? Are you sure that... How could they have stole it? How could they have got in here without being heard? I'm not talking about Smith and Jones, Ma. You mean Clem? Well, he had something under his arm that looked like a strong box. You ought to have better sense than to accuse him of stealing. I'm not, but I saw what I saw. Nothing can change that. There's an easy way to make sure, Ma... All you have to do is look in that cupboard where you keep it. If it's okay, all right. I just won't believe he could do that. You going to lock up the cupboard and never open it up again? If you're going to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich? No. i look, and I'll find the money, too. Well, what are you waiting for? Nothing. Well? All right. It's gone. What of it? It's as much his money as it is mine. Go on. Get out of here, Frank. And don't you say anything about this to anybody. It, it's our business. Clem's and mine. But, Ma... Go on. Get out of here. Okay. I'm a going. one. <sighs> Clem, Clem, why did you do it? We will continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The whole family goes for these famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. They're shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. Then... These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're, they're nourishing. Good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and, and iron. So, so try delicious, nutritious Quaker Puff wheat... And Quaker Puff Rice. Rice. So tasty. So easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Enjoy this thrifty deluxe family breakfast tomorrow. And remember, for variety, eat Quaker Puff Puff Wheat wheat one day, Quaker Puff Rice the next. Remember, too, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the, the big red and blue Quaker package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Now to continue our story. It was less than half an hour after Scar and Lefty had driven away from the post that Sergeant Preston reached it. Riding his sled was a young constable new to the Yukon named Ted Forrest. The great dog King ran free in front of the team. Looking! Fire, Husky! Hello! We stopping here? Just long enough to ask a few questions. King wants to go on. Hey, there's somebody coming out of that cabin. That's Frank Whittaker. He works for Mrs. Grantland. Hello there, Sergeant. Hello, Frank. 
This is Constable Forrest. He'll be patrolling this district from now on. Hello, Constable. Hello, Frank. Good to see you, Sergeant. I only wish you got here half an hour ago. Why, what happened? Maybe Miss Grant wouldn't like me to talk about it, but just the same, I think you ought to know. It's young Clem, Sergeant. Oh? Huh? He's been wanting to go up the Klondike and try his hand at prospecting. Miss Grantland wouldn't listen to him. Said it was a lot of foolishness and he belonged right here. Well, they've been arguing for days. But, of course, Miss Grantland always had the last say. Clem would need money for a grub stake and she wouldn't give him any. He's run away? Yeah. You see, there was a couple of trappers drove in the post yesterday afternoon with some furs to sell. Sergeant. Uh, go on, Frank. They come from Lake Kusaya, but they were heading north to look for gold. They leave right away? No. They were going to stay the night in the traveler's cabin. But they've gone. Yeah. Half an hour ago, I woke up. There were some dogs barking outside. I started to turn over and go to sleep, but then I thought maybe I'd better take a look. Yes? Young Clem's team was standing out back of the store, all harnessed, ready to go. Clem had a box under his arm. He threw it on the sled and drove off. Well, I started to get dressed over and tell Miss Grantland. But just when I get outside the door, I see these two trappers heading north into the forest. The same way Clem had gone. Then he didn't leave here with them. He had to get away fast. Do you know what was in that box, Sergeant? Money? Yeah. Every cent Miss Grantland had. She's all broke up about it. Oh, 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 here she comes now. I thought I told you to keep your mouth shut, Frank Whitaker. Uh, this is Sergeant Preston. You can see. How are you, Sergeant? Frank hasn't said anything he shouldn't have, Mrs. Grantland. Perhaps not. But the boy's gone, Sergeant. And I don't want him brought back. The money's between him and me. We'll forget about it. We can't do that. It's mine. I want a description of the two men who stopped here yesterday. They didn't do anything? You're wrong, Mrs. Grantland. Two days ago at Moose River, they murdered Joe Granger. <laughs> the motive was probably robbery. The floor of the cabin had been torn up. I don't know whether they found any gold or not. They had some furs. I bought them. King picked up their trail. We've been following it for the last 24 hours. I said the pelts came from Moose River. What did they look like, the men? They were both big. And they had black beards. One of them had a scar down the left side of his face. Scar Lamont. He said his name was Smith. And the other one must have been Lefty Muldoon. The man with the scar called him Lefty once or twice. Scar Lamont and Lefty Muldoon. They were both seen near Moose River shortly before the murder. And Clem. Clem started out for the Klondike with them. Frank says they didn't leave here with Clem. They followed him. We can hope they haven't caught up with him yet. Oh, Sergeant, please, up you... Up King. Ready, Ted? Sure. They're headed north. The trail goes by that big fur at the edge of the clearing. King will find it. On King! On, your husband! King set a fast pace along the forest trail. But 15 minutes after they had left the post, he slowed down and looked around at his master. What is it, King? Oh, he wants to stop. Yes. All right, boy. Ho, ho there. Well, the trail goes straight on. What is it, King? King started into the forest. The sergeant and the constable followed him. Look, Ted, look at the snow. Somebody's come this way, man on foot. He's covered up his tracks as best he could, but there's a footprint. I see. Whose? No telling. King thinks we ought to investigate. Yes, boy, go on. The dog led the way directly to a big stump. It was covered with snow, and King started digging down. To it. Something underneath there, King? Why, the stump's hollow. Yes. I'll take a look, boy. Anything inside? It's like a box. It is. A strong box. Could this be the one that Clem took? Must be. Well, then he didn't steal it after all. I never thought he did. What? Clem's a smart boy. Just the appearance of Scar and Lefty would be enough to make him suspicious of them. But Mrs. Grantland and Frank, what? Mrs. Grantland trusts everybody. Frank isn't very bright. Clem may have used this stump as a cash before. If he just brought the box out here to hide it. Why didn't he go back to the post? He must have heard Scar and Lefty coming after him. So he went on instead of turning back. King will find out for us. Back to the trail, boy. Back on the trail, King resumed his place at the head of the team. On King! On! Two miles farther on, the trail forked. And without any hesitation, King took the branch that swung to the east. You see, Ted? Clem isn't heading for the Klondike. He's making a big circle back to the post. He's trying to. We've got to hurry. On, King! Miles ahead, Scar and Lefty realized the trail they were following was swinging from the east to the south and that they were headed back in the same general direction of the post. But they did not stop. They could hear Clem's dogs. And finally, as they rounded a bend, they saw the boy. Pull up there! 
Show him we mean business, Lefty. Shoot. Okay. You hit him. The boy fell from the running board of his sled, and the outlaws raced toward him. He tried to struggle to his feet. Ho, ho, ho. Don't move, you little fool, or I'll shoot to kill. Crooks, I knew it. Go on, Lefty. Get the cash box off his sled. All right. So you stole your poor old ma's cash, huh, Clem? <laughs> Now, that ain't the right way to act. I never stole anything. You aren't going to get it either, Smith. For your information, kid, the name is Scar Lamont. And Scar Lamont always gets what he goes after. Not this time. Scar, <laughs> in here. I couldn't find it anywhere on the sled. What? I told you. So you cast it somewhere along the trail. That's for you to find out. You've got to make them talk. Look, you ain't in very good condition to argue, Clem. If you don't take care of that shoulder, you're going to die. You'll never make me tell where the money is. It's only a couple of thousand bucks. Don't you figure your life's worth more than that? He's passing out. Get a fire started. We'd better fix that shoulder. I'll take care of it. We need a fire. Hurry. The fire was lit, and the boy's wound was bandaged. At last, he opened his eyes. Ah, feeling better, Clem? You still here? Good thing for you, we are. Without this fire, you'd have frozen to death. I'm not asking you to do anything for me. Where's that money, Clem? I won't tell you. It belongs to Ma. She worked hard for it. No dirty crooks like you are going to get it. Your Ma's all alone at the post, outside of Frank and his wife. And they couldn't put up much of a fight. Now, you don't want anything to happen to your Ma, do you? What do you mean? You know what I mean. There's a law in this country, Scar. The Northwest Monitor here. The day's gone by when you could get away with murder. You wouldn't dare. Boy, we're wanted for murder right now. Sky. What's that? We mean business. It's the money or your ma's life. Now take your choice. Uh, Hurry up, make up your mind. All right. You win, I guess. I'll show you. Where? Not far from the post. I'll have to show you. Hey, what's that? Wolves? Oh, it's dogs. It may be pressed on. I sure hope so. Whoever it is, we'll be waiting for him. Douse that fire. All right. But King knew that the men they were following were not far away. And as he neared the bend in the trail, he slackened his pace and growled a warning. That was enough for the sergeant, and he called on the team to halt. Oh, hello. Hello, what, sergeant. We're taking our orders from King, Ted. He thinks we ought to stop. Yes, boy. I thought I noticed a light through the trees a few minutes ago. A campfire? Got a bend's gone now. But there's something ahead on the trail that King doesn't like. We'll leave the team here and take to the woods. Come on, King. The sergeant, the constable, and King plunged into the forest for a hundred feet and then turned to parallel the trail, a narrow strip of silver in the moonlight. But they would have passed the point where Scar and Lefty were waiting if it hadn't been for King. Far enough, boy. King started for the trail. The sergeant took hold of his harness and held him back. Easy. See anything, then? Uh, no men. There are some rocks. They must be hiding behind them, watching the trail. we better crawl up on them. Throw some snow. Right. Let's go. They crawled forward, foot by foot, with King setting their direction, until finally they could make out the figures of three men in the shadow of the rocks. See them, then? Now I do. Easy does it. On they crawled, closer and closer to the trail. As they neared it, the sergeant placed a restraining hand on the young constable's shoulders. What's the matter? They haven't heard us. No. Looking in the wrong direction. That must be Clem lying on the ground. I don't like to shoot. We might hit him. We're close enough to make a rush for it, aren't we? I think so. Should be able to get their guns where they have a chance to fire. Ready? All set. Let's go. The sergeant and the constable rose to their feet and started to run. When they broke from the cover of the trees, they were only a few feet away from Scar and Lefty, who were still looking down the trail. The sergeant leaped on Scar, and the constable went for Lefty. The outlaw's guns were wrenched from their grasp, but they turned and started to fight. Scar was big and tough, and realizing what capture would mean, he fought desperately. There were no rules in Scar's book, and he used every rough and tumble trick he knew. But the sergeant's rapier left kept him off balance. His gun had fallen to the ground, and once he made a break for it. But the sergeant caught him by the shoulder, whirled him around, and drove a right to his jaw. That was the end for Scar. His knees sagged. Another lap to the right, and he dropped to the ground. At that moment, Lefty, who was getting the better of the constable, reached for his knife. The metal flashed in the moonlight. But King saw the danger and threw himself against the outlaw. Lefty was knocked to the ground. And in the next instant, the constable had disarmed him. You're covered. Good work, Sergeant. I didn't have anything to do with it. It was Scar that shot you. You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. I warn you, anything you say will be used against you. Oh, that was a close call. 
King saved my life. Get them handcuffed, Ted. Right. You've been okay. wounded, Clem. Just below my shoulder. They banished Oh, let's see. They didn't want me to die before I told them where I'd cashed Ma's strong box. They said they'd kill her if I didn't. They won't have a chance to do any killing from now on. And King showed us where the strong box was, Clem. Don't worry about it. Safe on my sled. Oh, good. You sure pack a wallop, Sergeant. Don't like the looks of this wound. You better get you home as quickly as possible. Gosh, Sergeant. For some reason, that doesn't sound bad to me at all. And so Clem was carried to his sled. And as dawn broke the next morning, he was lying in his own bed. With warmth and food, he rallied. And it was clear that he would recover. Oh, you're looking better, son. Oh, I'm fine, Ma. Are you going to leave now, Sergeant? We have to, Clem. We have to get Scar and Lefty down to White Pass. But, uh, Clem, there's one question I want to ask you before I go. What's that? You still want to go up to the Klondike? Oh, oh gosh, no, Sergeant. There's no place like home. <laughs> and thanks for getting me back here. Sergeant, I, I don't have to tell you how grateful I am. And thank King, too. <laughs> He's right here. Oh, good boy, King. I guess it was you who tracked those killers down. All the way from Moose River. King never lost the trail once. If he had, what, if you hadn't got here when you did... We, uh, don't have to think about that now, Mrs. Grantland. You and Clem are safe, and with Gar and Lefty in the hands of the law, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Say, if you can't make up your mind which you like best, Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either kind of these delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Always keep a supply of both kinds on hand. Eat Quaker Puff Wheat one time, Quaker Puff Rice the next. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Lost River Ambush. On our way back from Barton Pass with our two prisoners, we ran into more trouble at Lost River. Louis Sorel, a likable French-Canadian, had done too much talking about the money he'd received for his furs. As a result, he nearly lost his life. For that matter... So did King and I. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.